So today I'm going to talk about uh, one of our recent real life case studies, um, which is going to give a fairly accurate indication of what we can achieve with radio over IP um, and how we can bring that into the, the geographically isolated workplaces and monitoring points. So um, if you have a look on the map here on the right hand side, this is showing uh, Western Australia. Uh, and what we had historically in this situation was we had 39 or 40 separate locations along the coastline. Now this coastline is somewhere between two to 3,000 kilometres long. I'm not sure of the exact um, length of it. But at 39 or 40 different locations, um, these small towns along the coast, we had organisations who were monitoring the maritime radio channels. So this is specifically to deal with the recreational market. So people who are going fishing or yachts sailing past, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, you had the ability to call in to somebody at a control room on the coast and say, you know, oh, my name's Michael and I'm going fishing today. This is my call sign. I should be back at five o'clock. Um, now it works wonderfully well, and I've used it myself personally. Uh, the problem here was that these are volunteer organisations. They're scattered along a huge geographic area, and they were basically all independent. So there was no real communications between them, even though they came under one overarching um, semi-government organisation. So a couple of the problems that they had was that a large part of their workforce are volunteers. And so the problem with that was a 24 hour operation became quite difficult in the volunteer environment. So what they were typically doing was during the day, they would have a control room down located on the wharf, whereby they would be calling to the vessels. Um, but then on weekends or in the evenings, that control room would be demanded and people would go back to their homes because they're volunteers and they didn't have enough workforce to have rotating shifts. Um, and in that situation, often the control rooms were unmanned, you know, during peak periods when they needed to take emergency calls. So that, that was the problem, that was the initial scenario. So what we've provided to this particular customer is one large system and all of these sites are now connected via ROIP. So at each of those sites, there are radio base stations, and at each of those sites, there are operator stations. Now, some of the advantages of bringing all of these together is that it now means two things. One, we can provide a central location to provide a control room which can be, as Paul mentioned, a thousand kilometres away from where the radios are located. So in that situation, if we have a, um, a location in the far north of the state, and for whatever reason, the people there get sick, or they want to go on holidays, or they just run out of volunteers, um, that particular station can now be run from a separate control room located, you know, a hundred kilometres down the road, or maybe a thousand kilometres down the road. It doesn't really matter. Um, because of that IP connectivity and the fact that the operator stations can be located anywhere on the network, that gives you that flexibility. So that's that top scenario there where you can see we've got a, a metropolitan control room with some operators, but then we've got our local control room scattered up and down the coast. But one of the other things which we implemented for for this particular customer was they wanted the ability to still run their control room locally, but after hours from home. So in this scenario, we have our volunteer goes down to the, to the uh, waterfront during the day and they run their control room from that location. It gets to five o'clock and what they do is they have uh, a small portable carry case, which effectively just has a laptop and, uh, and a, um, cellular modem in it and they pick that up and they go home and they can run their control room sitting in their lounge room eating their dinner because now that there is no restriction on where you are located to gain access to those radio channels so we now have 
the ability to have the volunteer going to the control room, doing the work from the control room, but in out of hours, maybe weekends, maybe evenings, they can remotely connect into the system and they still have full functionality. So they can sit with a laptop at their dining room table and run a life-saving organisation to, you know, coordinate the rescue of a yachty whose boat is capsized. So that's the scenario that we're looking at. So from, from that situation there, from having 40 independent organisations that all did sort of the same thing and all had sort of the same problems, we've now joined them all together. And so it allows coverage between sites. So if I want to go on holidays next week, I can arrange for an operator in the nearby town, which might be 100 kilometres away. He can now, from his location, he can monitor my radio channels and effectively do my job. If I wanted to be really enthusiastic, I could actually take my laptop with me on holidays. And from lying on a beach in Hawaii, I could actually run my control room. There is no geographic limitation. That's the big thing to remember here. Now, obviously, some of the major benefits to the organisation, one is we now have economies of scale. So, you know, Paul's talking about getting staff into some of these locations can sometimes, if the locations are remote and it's a volunteer workforce, then you may struggle to find people to cover that. Whereas now we can provide that coverage from another location. Uh, but also we're now looking at the fact that each of these organisations is not, for instance, one or two or three operators talking to four or five or six radio channels. We're now looking at a hundred operators talking across 150 radio channels and you get that economy of scale whereby when you break the cost down individually to each location it's much more cost effective so yeah i mean the main thing here the main driving factor was for this particular customer was the 24 7 365 coverage where previously there was large periods of time where some of the more remote locations were actually unmanned and then also the other thing is the work from anywhere that is very attractive that for them that enables them to get people to take on this responsibility you know previously they may have struggled to fill these positions and people would say oh, i'm sorry i can't afford to spend you know Every, every hour of every day monitoring the radio, listening for distress calls. Whereas now you can be on a working roster and you can, you can say, oh, okay, this week in the evenings, I'm going to be sitting at home, but I'm going to have access to the radio channels and I can listen to them and I can be that on-call radio operator from my lounge room. And then the other advantage, which Paul did touch on earlier was because the radio traffic and the operator voice traffic is now all in the IP domain, uh, A, it can all be pulled back to a central location and put into a voice recorder, which is quite important for um, post-mortem incident reporting. So you know, if something does go wrong, then uh, all of the audio has been recorded and that can be used by the emergency services to, um, to try and facilitate either a rescue or even if it's just uh, yeah, evaluating what went wrong and uh, a, le a lessons learned scenario. Uh, 